Patrick, thank you so much for joining me on the CEO Magazine video shows. And uh, I've known you for a while. I've known of your uh, uh, business, the Get Abstract business for a while, and it's really interesting. I want to congratulate you for creating something that I believe is very, very powerful and empowering for a lot of people that I know. Well, thanks for calling, yeah. I just wanted to get into the details of you know, how you got the idea, why did you get the idea, and, and how you have grown it to the extent that you've been able to do. I know that it's now fairly big, more than 5,000 book summaries, and uh, you've been quoted in The Economist and Harvard Business and so on and so forth. So why don't you tell me where exactly is the Get Abstract business right now? Okay, well, thank you, Nick, first of all, for contacting me. So we are honored that we can be uh, on your show and, and having this interview, uh, this, this conversation with you. Um, yeah, where did the idea come from? We were three, uh, three friends. We know each other from high school, so a long time ago. And um, we were all business in businesses, working as managers. And one of us actually had, or no, we all had the, the need for book summaries. And we thought, of course, that it's such a simple idea. Even, you know, in that old library of Alexandria where they had the, the book rolls, where they had to roll them open, each piece of roll had a little summary on the top because you couldn't unroll the whole document, it, not like a book, if you just want to take a glance. So there were always summaries. And we thought, of course, that must exist already. And then we looked around and we found that there was really not any company who, who would summarize a lot of books. So all the important, all the important books, and that's how the idea was born. So uh, at that time, I, I do recall there are few, there were few companies even before you started, such as Executive Book Summaries or or uh, Summary.com. At least two of them. Audio Tech was another one. But what was different from them that you wanted to do? Yeah, so they are still around. They have nice summaries, different format, but good quality and everything. The problem with those is they all do more or less maybe 30 summaries a year that they summarize. So these are the 30 books. If you like them, great. If, if there's anything else you're interested in, it's not there. Our vision really is you should summarize the entire Library of Congress, 25 million books. There should be a summary for every single book. And probably, uh, we think eventually it will be done. Maybe not by us, maybe it's a community, maybe it's a wiki or something that it will be done. Uh, and we said, okay, it's too big, uh, too big a task for us. Let's start with a smaller uh, subset of books. So we took the business books, but we said, we really want to look at all the books and summarize all of them. And a lot of these other companies work with 20 publishers. Um, there have been a lot of companies that are um, grow now and they don't work with any publishers. That is, they do it illegally. And um, we work with 450 publishers, so all the publishers, so we can actually summarize all the interesting books. Did, did you have any problems in, in getting them to agree with you? Well, you know... <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's not easy, it's difficult, and it's a give and take. So the publisher, if they give you the right, and even when you rewrite the summary in your own words, you need to get the right from the publisher. And we would never summarize a book where we don't have the written permission to write from the publisher. So you need to give them something in return, and at the end of the day, the publisher wants to sell more books. So you cannot build a business where you um, become a competitor and cannibalize their book sales. In the opposite, you have to help them sell more books. And um, that's what we do. We have media relationship uh, with many, many newspapers, with the Washington Post, with economist.com, with newspapers in India, with in newspapers in, in Asia, um, where we do bestseller. Uh, we promote books as bestsellers. That helps them get more visibility for their books, especially also outside the U.S. And then obviously, um, when you send out, you know, millions of summaries um, every year, um, people see a book jacket that they would have not seen otherwise, and that will help them decide and 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 uh, buy the book again. Interesting. Now, I, I can see that uh, you, know, you saw a space in the market that was unoccupied, you saw a need, 
at least your own need and therefore you thought other people should have that same need as well and and it was differentiated from audio tech and others great idea but that's a daunting task i mean to think that you will do so many summaries and people will buy you must have known that from where you're starting to where you're wanting it's a big massive behemoth task for three people unless you've got a lot of money from someone else that hey you're going to create 1000 and then you're going to start so help me understand how, you know what did you think at that point and how did you go about going from where you were to making money as well as to the number of summaries well of course nick we had no idea you know that was in we started in 1999 <coughs> We put up a website and we went online on the 15th of January in 2000. We had a website and we thought, here we are. Now people will start subscribing, you know. We have a website. That's it. We're done. We can go home. And uh, after three days, absolutely nobody came to our website. So we were like looking at the logs and there was small movements because we were clicking and nobody else obviously was clicking. So we, we made a purchase, we said, yeah, it's working, it's not the technology, and nobody was buying, and because that's just how it is, just if you, because you put up a website, that doesn't mean now the whole world was just waiting for you, obviously nobody was waiting for us, and you know, you have that wonderful business plan with all these numbers, um, and we always say cost is something you have to control, and it is within your control, and revenue is something you can wish for. And when you are still at that young phase and, and you have no experience, you, you always think revenue comes much faster than it actually does. Um, so, you know, it took a while and um, we kept the costs low. We did it maybe also a little bit the Swiss way because we're originally guys from Switzerland. We always worked on the product first and we tried to get a really good quality product before we would go out and try to sell it. And um, so it took a while, we had to, you know, keep our heads low. So how many, how many summaries did you have when you started and you thought that people will come? I think we had 200 summaries at that. 200 summaries. And, okay, so you started the website, did you do any marketing? Did you spend money on marketing and sales at that time? No, we didn't spend any, t any money on marketing for quite a long time. Our marketing really was, um, we had uh, very quickly a couple of big clients, some uh, big banks, um, some big automobile, automotive um, companies, and we tried to do really good customer service. I think at the end it's customer service and product quality. Even though we didn't have many summaries, and um, you know, we tried to provide the best service at the end to the client. And our marketing was they talk to other corporations. And that's how we could uh, win one client after the other. Okay, so you, your strategy was to sell to B2B rather than B2C? We, we, we sell to B2B and to B2C, but the B2C takes much longer. It's more diversified once you have it uh, and self-sustaining. Uh, and the B2B, obviously, you can, you can go out there, you can contact uh, clients, you can present them your product, and it's manual work. Um, and that's how we started uh, at the beginning. So you got a big client, uh, like a big corporation that buys a bulk number of subscriptions? Exactly. Um, clients either buy a certain number of licenses for their executives, for their um, hypos, um, for their new learners, and eventually, when they see the value, um, they stay by usually for the entire company. Really. And, and uh, in those situations, whom did you sell it to? Like, who was the point of contact when you were making the sale? Yeah, okay. The, you know, we sell very often to chief learning officers, to also corporate libraries, um, to head of HRs, or to... Um, people who are responsible for um, learning and development of the executive managers or, or young young leaders. Okay, so when you, when you went the B2B route, uh, was there an inflection point? Like, you know, after five, six sales, all of a sudden things picked up. H how was your experience? And, and because you didn't spend much on marketing, you said, so you were pretty much making a sales call. H how, did, how was that experience and how did it go about? 
You know, I think our experience is that you have to grow organically. Um, I, you know, if you take 100 companies or 1,000 companies or 10,000, you have one Google in there, you have one Facebook in there, um, which grow exponentially. And everybody would like to have that, obviously. And um, out of, uh, the other 990 probably you don't see anymore after a couple of years, and you never hear of them. And the other nine, those are the companies who grow steadily, continuously, organically, healthy, and that's the, the way we took. And, and so it was, it, it, there wasn't, it was steady work, you know, you have to improve your product, you have to improve um, your communication uh, um, tools, and you get one client after the other. And as I said, if you have good customer service, they talk to each other, and then you get references back from, from new clients. And did you have to borrow money? Um, we had, at the beginning, yes, we had a, a business angel in Switzerland. Uh, that was a, uh, a young man who belongs to one of the very richest, com richest families in Switzerland. They had never done any venture capital investments. And his father, when he was young, wanted to invest into a company who does um, package, cardboard packages for milk. It's called Tetra Pak. Yeah, and his father didn't allow him to do that because he said, "Why? Who would ever buy the milk in, in cardboard and not in glass bottles?" And if they had done that, they would probably be now the the richest family in the world, possibly or for sure in Switzerland. So it, he, his son, he said, "Okay, you go. I don't want to say no to you." And he and he gave us some money at the beginning. And which helped us obviously at the, at, the, at the beginning to grow the company. And after five or six years, um, we bought all the shares back from him, and, and he he had a, a happy exit. Excellent, excellent. So now, did you figure out uh, ways of you know back then in 1999, still uh, things were in their infancy in terms of the globalization and 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 uh, and virtual teams. Uh, did you start off with virtual teams or did you have to hire your own team members right he uh, here in the US or in Switzerland? Um, yeah, both. We had to hire our own team members, but a lot of them are virtual. So, you know, all the people who, who read the books and summarize the books, those people are all journalists, although that was a long journey to find the people who really know how to write well. You know, in English, we would like to have an economist uh, type of level of quality of English writing. And we were looking at um, doctors or postdocs, people who are really, really good on the topic, but just don't know how to write so well. And, um, and, and now we work with a lot of journalists who are excellent writers, who understand the topics. You know, the Wall Street guy does more finance literature, the New York Times, the Washington Post does more other types of, of books so that the, what comes out it's, it's a fun to read, it's easy to read and it's accurate in terms of how it summarizes the book. Now so many mistakes were possible in terms of marketing, sales as well as operations like you said you know you, you were uh, hiring people and you were working virtually so did, did, you, did you, you, you obviously had your share of difficulties and failures what are some of the lessons for anyone who is trying out something along these lines in terms of information products, uh, products that are, uh, are not real physical. Uh, what are the things that they should be careful with? Okay, I mean, first of all, yeah, as I said before, I think quality is really, really mandatory, that you have high quality, whether it's physical or an electronic product. If you, if you build software and it doesn't work, you know, that's you'd rather sh wait until it works and then go and sell it. And be patient also. We, ha we did some, you know, we did a lot of mistakes, in at the, especially at the beginning when we did have investor money because they want to grow quick, maybe quicker than what was good. So we had um, a lot of, we hired a lot of salespeople and we were not really ready yet to sell on a, a bigger scale. And um, so th that was a mistake we did. So, you know, Take it easy. Don't go, don't go too fast. 
um, yeah. So, so making making mistake, making sure you're growing, but you're growing steadily and and developing your yourself, developing the product, de- developing the value proposition. That seems to be the core for you. Unlike what we hear in a typical venture capital environment, you you know you want to run fast and and go through and and demonstrate numbers. Uh, but you're saying that instead of demonstrating numbers in terms of clients, customers, or uh, sales. You wanted to demonstrate numbers of your summaries and good quality. Absolutely. At the end of the day, as I said, cost is is a uh, is a reality, and revenue is is uh, a, is a dream, is what you wish for. So you have to balance those. You keep the cost under control. You know how long you will survive with the money you have as a startup until you break even, and then you ha- you you know how fast you can grow and expand your company. Now one one. Uh, other question about defining your market. Did you know upfront when you started out that this is what my market is going to be, or did you meander a little and say, "Well, that's not the market really. This is the market." Did you have that sort of experience? Um, our market is really everybody. You know, we, I haven't met a single person who says, "Hey, we summarize business books." Who says that's a bad idea? Everybody likes it. Um, however, also everybody, every company has been able to do good business until now without that product. So, you know, when you sell a firewall, everybody needs a firewall in their company. You don't have to explain why you would need a firewall. You just have to explain why your firewall is the best one. Um, so we, need, we have to explain, we still have to explain why when you buy this product, you will have a better company, more efficient um, employees. Um, more engaged employees. How can you develop your informal learning? And um, so that's how we what we tried. And we because we tried maybe too big a market also. And it, yeah, it's still we still <laughs> we still don't have the special niche really of people that we try to target. Um, so, but but you still went after the B two B space. You went after the larger uh, clients. Uh, did, but did you think before when you started that maybe I'll just open the website and therefore uh, the end user will buy a product, or did, is that how you started? Yeah, actually, we, our our goal was to go for for higher ex- executives for top managers because we said you know they not they don't have enough time, they don't have enough time, but they need to know what's written in these business books. And uh, as it turns out, a CFO he doesn't want to read mainstream uh, finance books because he already knows all that stuff. But if people, um, we have a lot of people who never did an MBA who are maybe working in a tech company, but they grow, maybe they have to lead a small team of a couple of people and they are very interested in reading, well, what does Six Sigma mean? Um, what, what, how do I do a 360 feedback and stuff like that? So. These were people that we didn't think they would be interested in, in reading these summaries, and we discovered, yeah, they were actually not just the top uh, top level executives, but a lot of um, other people as well, other employees who are who like to read short summaries. So I, I understand because it's it's you know it is not driven by uh, definable characteristics that okay, large corporation, director level person more likely to buy, smaller corporation. VP level person not likely to buy. None of those things really work in this situation, I can understand. Because mostly it's driven by personal characteristics. There may be a student who would probably want to buy and s- figure out a way to scrap up that kind of money and, and, and purchase the uh, services because that person has the desire to learn. Same way we would, we would expect a senior executive to have that desire to learn and you can't identify that desire. So therefore you say the market is everybody. But you still had to say, what's my defined market that I can go after so that I can generate the revenue that I need? And it seems like at some point you decided that you're going to go after big corporations. Uh, can you help me l- understand a little bit more that thought process? Yeah, absolutely. So at the beginning, being in Switzerland, we had some contacts, obviously, to some of the banks. So, you know, the, the two big banks in Switzerland um, became customers and um, those were some of the first first clients that we had, and then we had some connections to consulting companies, where basically all uh, two of the big four became our clients at the, at the very early stage, and um, so that that kept 
on being our focus at the beginning, especially let's try to go for financial financial corporation and also consulting company. So last question, how do you describe your market uh, between these three? Large corporations, small startup, mid-sized companies, and individual customers. What is the market share? Um, you know, the, the, the B2C client is growing, maybe makes up a third of our, of our clients. And um, the, the B2B market, um, you know, the, the other half, the, the, the mid-size is a segment um, that is growing more now. It's more a segment that you would like to get that they uh, hear about you through uh, branding, marketing activities, and they come to your website and sign up by themselves. Um, and once they are a client, then obviously you offer them services from, we have learning consultants within our uh, offices who help clients decide what books are best for their employees, what books are best for their specific needs that they have in the company. Uh, so all the corporate clients will have access to those resources and um, so the mid-sized ones we wait until they come to us, the really big ones we go proactively and ask them if we can show them what we could do for them. Wonderful. One last question. Where do you go from here? Do you stay focused on summaries or do you go into newer services and newer sources of revenue? And you know, we started with book summaries because, our, you know, um, we, we think because we summarize, there's so much knowledge in those books and you don't have time, you don't know about the book and it, it's lost, you lost knowledge. And we, we think that by providing the, this condensed, compressed knowledge, we help just a little bit uh, people helping them making better decisions and, and make this a little bit of a better world. Now, the good knowledge is not only in books. It's also in, on the web, in articles, in, in magazines, in videos. And we are now, as the next step, expanding and trying to get not only knowledge from books, but also from other resources. And now that you ask, you know, we have uh, just signed an agreement with TED. You know, the, the TED videos, the TED Talks, which are great, great, very, very interesting information. You know, the books is more the past until now, because it takes one, two, three years until the book is done. So the author of a book explains what he has learned, uh, best practices, so you can apply them today and make better decisions. TED Talks is more like the crazy guys and innovative and from today looking into the future, what's going to happen in five years and ten years. So um, we launched uh, that new product where we summarized TED videos. It, we launched it actually 1st of August, just uh, one week ago. Um, so all, the, all our subs uh, uh, individual subscribers, they, uh, they can access now not only summaries from books, but also summaries of those videos. These are only two pages because the video is 18 minutes. And um, we, um, you can now, in two pages, you see what is it all about. And then we provide a link that goes directly to the video. So that's one extension. And the other is, as I said, um, we like to summarize reports. And we, we have an agreement with The Economist, where The Economist helps us curate. We are not the experts on, um, on finance reports. And here we are, we are, again, we're focusing on finance reports. There are, you know, reports from the World Bank, from the People Bank of China, from the European Central Bank. Some reports are 50 pages, some are 200 pages, and you don't, I mean, you don't have time to read them. So we, the Economist helps us find those best reports, and we again we summarize them on two or on five pages. So that's really uh, where we're moving into right now in, as the next step. Excellent. I, I think uh, that's a great idea. I was thinking about, you know, what might be your next steps, and I didn't think of TED, but I was thinking that, you know, you are in the business of educating people to make better choices, and there are just so many incredible number of ways that you can help uh, besides the book. Well, the book is a great source, but I think this TED idea is excellent, and uh, there's a lot of material there. So, Patrick, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.